Thanks, Gary. Welcome. Friday morning, 8.30. Um, thanks for coming down, especially after the partying last night. As computer scientists, we've worked long and hard on making computers smaller, faster, cheaper. I'd say we've done a pretty good job. We've placed the internet in your pocket. Pretty amazing device. This goes with me everywhere I go. It augments me. It makes me smarter by putting all the world's knowledge at my fingertips. Helps me remember things I would never otherwise remember. I actually haven't missed my wife's birthday since I got this device. Helps me communicate with people and in ways that I've never ever been able to do before. It's quite an amazing little device. And so that's my summary of, of what I've just said. Um, the fascinating thing in watching the proliferation of this device as it spread across the globe has really come in the realization that as technologists, we're not just creating machines or devices. What we're really doing, at least if we're doing it right, is we're designing experiences. We're crafting our relationships with our devices and with each other. We're changing culture. We're shaping the way we live. Now, computing used to be something that an information worker would sit at their desk and do. It used to be a task unto itself. These days, we all expect that we're computing all the time, all the place, as we go about our everyday lives. It's a pretty amazing transformation in the way we use computing. And so the, the challenge has moved from making computer, computers smaller, faster, cheaper, to making computers that are more accessible, more of the time and place, to more people and to do more interesting things. But we've got a problem here. As we've shrunk our devices, as we've made them smaller and smaller, so too have we shrunk our ability to interact with them. How often is it that you've seen someone walking down the street, hands, eyes, mind, busy, consumed with the act of interacting with the device rather than with the world and with the people around them? As we continue to shrink these devices, as we make them smaller and smaller, so too do we shrink our ability to hold these devices, our ability to see the screens, our ability to interact with them. And this is a problem. Imagine what we could do if we could free you of, of, of having to take this device out of your pocket. Imagine if we could free you from having to interact and, and, and focus on the device rather than your task at hand. Imagine what a world like that would be. And so the, the, the task at hand for us and the task that we've been tackling is one of freeing the user from this, of creating rich and natural ways of interacting with, with our devices and with our computing environments and with the people around us. The approach we've been taking is one of looking at novel sensors and sensing techniques that, that a user may, may carry or wear on their bodies um, in order to create a, um, the ability to interact with our computers in much more natural ways. And so we've done things like, um, you know, with a simple sensor on body, be able to track the posture of your body or the pose or the gesture. We've looked at electrical muscle sensing to be able to sense fine finger motions as you go about your real world tasks um, without having to instrument your hands because that, that would be kind of clunky in the real world. Today, what we're going to talk about is a technology um, which is in its fairly early stages that we call skin put. Skinput uses bioacoustics, so sound on the body, in order to turn your arm, or any part of your body for that matter, into a touch sensitive surface. So here's the phenomena we're working with. Here's a user tapping on the arm, not a particularly flabby user, not particularly hard taps. If you slow the video down, you see the amount of mechanical energy transmitting through the arm. It's actually kind of disturbing to watch. <laughs> Um, well, it turns out if this is happening, um, then we've got a shot of de devising sensors that can pick up not only the, the fact that your arm has been touched, but where it's been touched. And so we've built a, a very early um, prototype piece that utilizes cantilevered piezo sensors. These are little sensors that vibrate um, as it senses mechanical energy up the arm. Um, Think of these as microphones. In fact, each bank of these could be thought of as a simple microphone or one axis accelerometer. It can be shrunk really small, can be put anywhere in your arm, into a bracelet, into a wristwatch. Um, and what we've done is we've, we've, we've developed algorithms that sit behind this and that look at the signal and allow us to detect when you're tapping and where you're tapping. 
And so rather than talk about it anymore, I'm gonna hand the stage over to my colleague, Scott Saponis, to show you a quick demo. Scott. Hi, hi everyone. Um, so what you saw on that slide right there is a picture of this prototype I'm wearing on my arm. So like Disney said, we have a set of 10 cantilever piezo sensors around, here, around my arm that can sense uh, any type of tapping on my arm. So we've turned the arm into a tapping surface. So if you look at the screen up there while I tap my wrist a few times, you'll see uh, some wavy lines indicating that I tapped. But what you'll notice is if I tap it somewhere else, you'll see different wavy lines. What, that, what this means is we can develop a signature so that we can tell the difference between different places that you tap, turning this into a, a tap surface. So what I'm gonna do now is show you a little mock-up of a uh, phone interface that you could control with a system like this. So I'm gonna maybe uh, navigate down to my games here see what I've got loaded up. All right, uh, Tetris, the demo I use for almost every new input technology. I've got the philosophy that uh, if you can play Tetris, you can uh, do anything. Let's, let's see if I can put this piece down here, maybe rotate, rotate this piece. Maybe I should move him over a little bit, drop him down. And I'll, I'll show you a couple more things we could do. Maybe I'll uh, go up and over to my email while I'm on stage here and see what people have said. Uh, see what, De what Desney has to say. <laughs> I'm not sure that's helpful. Uh, we got another email down here. Let's see what Dan has to say. <laughs> what did you do to our code? <laughs> so you get, you get the idea there. So um, this is just one example of what you might be able to do. You can imagine either maybe having some way to view this, um, maybe projected on your arm, maybe in your glasses, but even if you just have headphones in, a lot of this you'd be able to do, uh, you'd be able to control with the input being using my arm as the input surface and the output, maybe reading my email to me, maybe I'm changing songs, um, or, or maybe I'm learning a language while I'm walking through a park. I don't want to broadcast the slideshow. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. So um, as Scott mentioned, you know, Tetris is a, a fun test application for us. It's, of course, not the be-all, end-all application. Um, it's got some nice properties. We can dial up and down the difficulty and the speed. Um, it's got some fairly stringent um, accuracy and timing requirements. Of course, now, now that we've shown you the input side of things, think about the output side of things. Um, in, this, in this demo, we've coupled a Pico projector, um, in, a, in this case mounted on the, the arm, um, but it could very easily be built into a headpiece, a headset, um, an earpiece, um, that projects on your arm and that tracks where your arm is going. And all of a sudden, you don't have to take this device out anymore. Um, you're walking down the street, you've got the interface, you've got your computer um, right at the touch of your fingers. Um, think of all the amazing things we could do there. Um, so just to, just to wrap up, um, again, you know, this is a very early prototype. Um, it's meant to inspire thought, not to be a completed end piece. Um, there are a million different ways we can take this as we start to imagine the next generation of interfaces that we may create um, and the seamlessness and, and the, the connection that we can create um, to the human body. Um, the human body has been a wonderful playground for us. Um, it, it's you know, this amazing device that goes with you wherever you go. One may argue you go where your body goes. Um, you get to interact with it in ways that um, you couldn't any other device. You could close your eyes and still find your arm. You could put your arms behind your back or in your pocket. Um, so kind of an amazing playground of, of, of technology interface. Um, and so as we move forward, um, I would encourage everyone and uh, to, to think about all the different ways we could, we could make our interfaces much richer, our connection to computing, um, and how we can craft these really rich experiences. Thanks for your attention. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Scott.